Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over updates on my 3D printed electric bike drive conversion. If you haven't seen my previous attempt at this, you should go check it out. It kind of has a little bit of reference to this video. I also made a cool two-speed gearbox that'll likely come in handy in another project down the road. Also, for anyone waiting for the next supercharger video, I'm working on it. However, this time of year I get wild swings in temperature like 10-15 degrees daily, which makes everything a little extra difficult. So I decided I'm going to hold off for a little bit and do another project in the meantime. I also have a lot of stuff going on in my life otherwise, and I have a general lack of stamina due to medical issues. So unfortunately, YouTube projects kind of get put on the back burner. Anyways, back to the task at hand. Originally I had gone with the two-speed gearbox from the original video, however it was too large and getting gear ratios out of that and everything to fit was kind of a problem. Back when I was doing testing for my centrifugal supercharger, I wanted to see what kind of abuse one of those gearboxes would handle. So I did some modifications to the design, printed it out, and slapped it on my bicycle. Also to note, this isn't my normal daily bicycle when I want to go for a ride, this is just a test platform. So anyways, when I set all of this up, I just kind of made it with what I had. And the final drive sprocket for the rear axle was a little bit too small. And at the time, I didn't want to bother messing around with trying to source another one. Now the weather has gotten to the point where it's decent enough to work on something like this and be able to test it. I decided to dig around looking for a sprocket for the rear end. Unfortunately, I can't really find anything for a reasonable price for the old school bike sprockets, which is half by one eighth. Imperial for those who aren't in the United States. That being said, what I ended up doing was getting a sprocket for a standard 41 chain and just machining it down so that the 1 8 chain will fit onto the sprocket. Getting the rear wheel mounted with the new sprocket was a little bit of a to do. I ended up having to put two washers behind the frame plate to space it out a little bit as well as kind of play around with some other things. I also ended up having to bang the sprocket on the hub around just to kind of make sure it was square to the wheel or square enough that it'll work. It's decently tight to the frame but there should be enough room to just pass a chain through here. After the rear axle is mounted, it's time to move on to adjusting the chain length. While doing this, I also printed the chain tensioner again with some design updates from the original version that I tried before. This chain was originally made out of two chains, so there's two master links in it anyways. So I'm going to take one section out and add a longer section. Eventually, if this works out, I'm going to replace all the chain and everything with new parts as well. When I went to cut the chain, my chain brake was missing the little pin to push the pins out. So I got to do it the hard way and use a grinder. After the chain is cut, cleaned up, I join it to the other piece of chain and put everything together and I kind of mess around with the location of the chain tensioner to tighten everything up. So originally this tie wrapped on floating chain tensioner was just kind of a temporary stopgap, but it seems to work really well. So I'm going to go with it until I come up with something better. It does a good job of keeping it out of my leg and everything and there seems to be enough clearance. I know it looks a little sketchy having my foot so close to a chain, but reality is you're just sliding by another one on the other side of the bike as it is anyways. Either way, I wouldn't wear sandals on a bike with open chains of any sort. I like my toes where they are, even if I can't feel half of them. So with everything all together, I was excited to go for a little test ride, and I went for a ride with my work boots on, and I kicked the motor, which cracked the gearbox. Strangely enough, it still worked all right. So back in the shop, I guess this is the wonderful part about 3D printing is the night I broke it, I just turned the printer on, sent the files over and went to bed. 
woke up this morning with the new part. I'll have to change the parts over the bearings and everything from the inside of this one and everything seems to still be alright so unless I find something catastrophically wrong I'm going to use all the other parts off of this box. Now during my previous experimenting I was trying to stick an air pump on the side to run cold air through the motor being as the motor I'm using is pretty much sealed up and doesn't allow for airflow. This didn't really work well so I'll be getting rid of this getting the motor out and you can see that one screw was the only thing really holding the back panel together that and the rest of the gearbox so I'll take the bearings and everything out of the old gearbox the only thing I noticed is one tooth missing and that drive lug for the air pump broke off so I'm assuming it broke off and then a little piece of it went through the gears it's only about half a tooth though and there's like three teeth in contact at all times it should be alright otherwise I need to make a spacer in here to uh, stop the gear from touching one of the little mounting studs but otherwise everything seems to transfer over good and it should work fine for now at least uh, until I break it again but I guess that's the name of the game when you're designing things it's kind of a back and forth between design build break fix break fix break fix until it doesn't break anymore a little bit of grease in the gearbox gonna put everything back together mount it back in the bike hook the chain back up and I should be good to go for a test ride Ultimately, with the lower final drive, it will be slower than I originally had built it to be, but that's probably a good thing. On a little bike like this, you don't really want to go too fast. There's not much for brakes here, and the bike itself is geared extremely low, so I kind of like using this to just go slow in the bush, crawl around and explore with. But even with this gear ratio, it's not really propelling itself. It can and it can't. Depends on flat ground with no wind. It has no problem accelerating. But if there's any sort of hill, it starts to lose speed and kind of falls into the torque medium with the motor. I think I might be able to get away with a lower gear ratio yet without really sacrificing any top speed ability because I'm really pushing this motor still. Turns out 125 watts isn't really a lot of power. And that leads me into my further development. Now I'm going to have to kind of toss this around on my head for a little bit of while and kind of let it sort itself out. But I would like to set up with a brushless motor. I would imagine I could find one a lot shorter with a lot more power overall both in torque and horsepower. Don't really need to go crazy but achieving 125 watts on a brushless motor could be done on quite a small platform. Now I need a lot of torque for this, so I'm probably going to be shooting around for like 170 to 270 kV. Running on the 24 volt battery, it shouldn't be too much of a difference and too much strain on this gearbox while giving me a lot more end user power and efficiency overall. At the time of filming and editing, this gearbox requires a machine shaft, but before I put out the files and put out the video, I intend to standardize this a little bit, modify the gear so that it can just be clamped to an 8mm shaft and use 608 bearings so there's no machining and something like this can be made from mostly anyone. However, the files for that specific gearbox will not be tested by the time I get them out, so use at your own risk, like anything else I make anyways. And that's about all I got for you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this and like I said before, if you're waiting on the supercharger stuff, I am working on it. At this point, I intend it to be my next video, but nothing on this YouTube channel is set in stone, so things are subject to change at whatever happens in my life. At any rate, if you guys like this, do the social, you know, do the thing, hit the buttons, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.